this is my second time to South Africa, a very beautiful country. And, and uh, my first time was in uh, last year at the invitation of NETLAG. So uh, I've actually pretty much uh, requested to present uh, uh, the, the last time was uh, why Malaysia implemented minimum wage. And, and this time around, I'm, I'm requested to present um, what are the challenges that we had faced since 2013. We started minimum wages in January 2013, and what are the challenges we have faced. And to share some of the economic indicators uh, that we have got so far, uh, the early effects of the 2013 minimum wages. And, and I must uh, inform all of you that uh, I, I'm not a PhD scholar, I'm not a researcher, I'm, I'm basically a labor officer since 1992 until today and I've been seconded to the National Wages Consultative Council. So the, the indicators that I'm going to show you, um, uh, we, we collected it from the uh, authorities in Malaysia, namely the Department of Statistics Malaysia. So um, these are just the early effects. We, we reckon that uh, minimum wages sometimes will take a good five years for us to really know the uh, real effects of minimum wages but uh, we are in, into the third year. So uh, I'll be sharing some of the uh, early uh, mixed results. It, it's actually not really 100% uh, positive. We have a bit of uh, negative uh, effects as well, uh, and, and, and we will, we'll, we'll be going to all of that now. Now, um, all right. okay. so, um, but, but before that, I'd just like to mention two things. Um, we, we actually had uh, similar uh, experiences of uh, engaging with stakeholders, like, like what South Africa is doing now. We actually had uh, nothing less than 200 seminars, discussions, meetings with various stakeholders. Many views were put forward to the uh, Ministry of Human Resources because we, we spearheaded the minimum wages uh, initiative. And, and some are pros, some are cons. And, and just to share, in one very big forum with about 400 participants, the employers group, the chief of the employers federation said, um, minimum wages will be implemented in Malaysia over my dead body. So that was how tough um, we had faced the employers community in Malaysia. They were dead against the minimum wage. And, and, and um, we were surprised with these comments, but we went ahead. We went ahead, and, and he's still around. <laughs> so, uh, but it wasn't easy, it wasn't easy. The workers group really wanted minimum wages because since we achieved independence in 1957, until 2012, the wages has not gone up as what we expected, and, and uh, that was a very, very big concern in our country. And um, now, let me just go on. Okay, this will be the uh, uh, I'd, uh, outline of my presentation. So basically, I'll be highlighting some of the economic indicators uh, and challenges and, and moving forward. So this is Malaysia. I think um, if you know where is Thailand, you know where is Singapore? We are in between that. So it's between Thailand and Singapore. So we have two parts, the West Malaysia. We have a different minimum wage for West Malaysia, and we have a different minimum wage for East Malaysia, Sabah, Sarawak. Uh, a bit lower, 900, and one th uh, 900 for West Malaysia, ringgit. Eh? I'm not talking about US, ringgit. And 800 for East Mal West Malaysia, sorry, East Malaysia. Now, uh, our economic... Uh, Background may be a bit different than South Africa. Our unemployment rate is between three to four percent. So um, we, I guess that's that's quite good. And and inflation rate is about three percent, three to four percent. So we 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 are on a different um, platform when we introduce minimum wage. But things are changing now in 2015. I'll be highlighting some of the uh, indicators later on. Now, these are the objectives of minimum wage that we had. I think we can skip that. 
Now, uh, before we look at the impact or effects, uh, let me just uh, give an outline on what is the structure of minimum wages in Malaysia. We adopted the uh, basic wage as minimum wages. So our minimum wage in our legislation is not gross wages. It's not take-home wages. It's basic wage. So it doesn't include allowances. It doesn't include any value of non-monetary benefits. So it's purely basic. So what I mean basic is basic of 900 for West Malaysia, basic wage of 800 for East Malaysia. The reason why we uh, had uh, decided the parliament, uh, when, when they debated the, the act, the reason was that uh, they said that the basic wage was low in Malaysia. And there were a lot of other allowances and, and whatnot which was incorporated as part of the total compensation package. So what we found that when the basic wage was low, the, the contribution to retirement benefits, we call it employees provident fund in our country, was low. The calculation of overtime pay was low. The payment for social security benefits was low. So we wanted to increase all that at one go. So that is why we decided to have basic wage as minimum wage in our country. Now, uh, we introduced, we gazetted the uh, order in July 2012, and we had it in force January 2013 for big employers. Our definition of big employers is six workers and above. We started them 1st January 2013. And, and for micro employers, I, I don't, do, you don't, do you have a pointer? Okay, never mind. So you can look at the box there. A later commencement date for those uh, micro employers. Micro employers are those employers with five workers and below. Yes, Aska. Yeah, these are micro employers. The reason why we wanted to give a later enforcement date for the micro employers was because they are small employers, the profits are low. Um, and, and they find it difficult during our early engagement sessions needed more time. So we gave them a, a good one year from July 2012 when we gazetted the order to July 2013. So we told them we give you one year for you to do whatever you need to do uh, on, on your business structure or wage model. So we gave them one extra year. And we also had an, a provision in our minimum wage order 2012 an application for deferment. It's not exemption, it's deferment. Deferment in the sense that if there are um, employers who think they cannot start their minimum wage obligations from 1st January or 1st July, they could apply before 31st December 2012 because we gazetted on 16 July 2012 and we told them you need to apply before 31st December 2012. And what we did was we formed a deferment committee. The deferment committee comprised the NWCC, which is the National Wages Consultative Council, one employer member, one worker member, and chaired by the government member. And I was there as a secretary. So my job was just to do the logistics and all that. So the deferment committee comprised of the three person, they decide which companies to be given deferment of a later commencement date. And, and we didn't reveal the companies that applied, the name of the companies, that was just for my own consumption. And none of the three members knew which company applied and what not. And, and we deliberated, and one of the key uh, documents that we requested the employers to produce was the past three years financial audited accounts of their company. So because we wanted to see whether there are genuine applications for deferment. So we did that and most of, about 6,000 employers applied and after the scrutinizations, about 1,000 employers were given deferment. And we took up the deferment uh, decision to the NWCC and subsequently we took it up to the cabinet and we had it gazetted. So it was a legal uh, deferment as far as our act is concerned. 
The reason why we just wanted to start off, uh, take off in a very smooth manner, because we reckon that uh, to, to implement minimum wage on a national scale for the first time ever in, in, in Malaysia, after about 55 years of independence, we think they need some, uh, th there's a need for some employees to be given some, some adjustment. So the deferment was given until a maximum of uh, end of December 2013. So the whole 2013 was more like a hand-holding session. We didn't really punish employers who did not pay minimum wage. We, we advise them, we guide them, because some of them could not really understand the, the legal tax of the minimum wage order. So it was more like a hand-holding. Uh, this is the rate, I explained this one. So the minimum wage was non-applicable to domestic servant. And we also had a provision where reduced rate for probationers. Uh, we wanted to encourage employers to employ uh, fresh workers who do not have experiences. So we allowed them a reduced rate of 30%, maximum 30%, for a maximum of first six months of their employment. Meaning to say, from month six, they will have to be paid full minimum wage rate, that is 900 or 800, whichever their location is. And since we were implementing the minimum wage for the first time ever, we also introduced this clause here because our minimum wage was basic wages. So we allowed a provision in our minimum wage order, a clause for restructuring of wages, subject to the agreement of the trade unions, if the company have a trade union, or if there's no trade union, individual workers. What we uh, came out was that um, we allowed the employers to sit down with the trade union or the workers uh, because the basic wage was low, say 500 ringgit, and the basic wage was 900 ringgit. So if they have allowances that they are already paying with the worker for the workers, they can negotiate with the worker, allow the, if the workers allow them, then they will be incorporated into the basic wage. So at the end of the day, they should be getting a basic wage of 900, and the total wages should not be less than what they were earning earlier. So this is clearly outlined in uh, five conditions in the order, the minimum wage order. And it's very legal, very legally technical, so I don't want to go into that. Um, so this is how we started off. So there is some flexibility in terms of uh, restructuring. There, there was a provision for deferment application, not exemption per se, deferment. And, and uh, we had a later commencement date for the micro employers. And the big employers, six and above, started on 1st January 2013. Now, that, that was a bit of the background. Now, uh, when we came uh, to the idea of what should be the parameters to, uh, to have the rate of the minimum wage, so the technical committee, uh, we, we have a technical committee under the NWCC, <coughs> which I'll be talking later on at, at the afternoon session. But basically, the technical committee is the backbone to the NWCC, uh, whereby the technical committee, there are no employers there, no workers there. They are independent groups. They are independent professors, statisticians, economic lecturers, sociology lecturers. Oh, 10 minutes. Oh, okay. So uh, the technical committee generally uh, advise the council on technical aspect because the council is a tripartite council. They are not well versed, generally they are not well versed with the technical uh, details. So the technical committee advice. So this is the criteria that they came out with. Uh, the parameters that need to be included into the minimum wage calculation. And this is the formula that they adopted. Uh, I don't know where they got it from. Uh, I'm not sure. But uh, this is the formula that was uh, agreed by the council when the technical committee uh, 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 proposed. So based on the indicators, we have the poverty line income, uh, which was uh, used to determine the threshold of poverty line. In, in, in Malaysia, and we have the percentage of power productivity growth. CPI is the inflation rate, 
and the unemployment rate and, and what not. So based on this, we had an outcome of certain amount of uh, minimum wage rate. That was not, not, not 900 and 800, it was a bit higher. But when we took it up to the cabinet, the cabinet decided that since it was the first time we were implementing the minimum wage, they agreed on a, a bit lower than what it came out from the formula. So that, that's a bit of the history. Now, uh, salaries and wages, we implemented minimum wage in January 2013. So if you want to compare the salaries of 2012, it was 1,200 and it increased to 1,300 in, in 2014. We, we don't have 2015 data yet. And <coughs> mean wages also increased from 1,916 ringgit Malaysia to 2,231 in, in 2014. Share of compensation of employees, CE to GDP, uh, initially uh, it was 32.9. So it increased to 34.9 in 2015. Uh, a, a slight increase, but it's in, on a very positive trend. And uh, unemployment rate, um, we were worried initially. Now, before that, let me explain the, the, the World Bank report. Before we implemented the minimum wage, uh, we engaged World Bank to advise Malaysia on whether we should have a minimum wage policy, and if yes, what should be the um, parameters involved and how it should be implemented. So they came out with a report. The report is available online. I think some of you may have read it. You just Google um, optimal, optimal minimum wage policy in Malaysia by World Bank. So we, we, we were guided by that, but we didn't 100% take their recommendation. We, we modif modified it to suit our malicious uh, experience. So the unemployment rate, we were worried uh, uh, it, it will be bad because minimum wage uh, implementation, but somehow uh, it was not that bad. It dropped, in fact, 2012 was 3%, and 2013 it went up a bit, and we don't know why, because I, I'm, I'm not a researcher. I, I didn't look at the correlation relationship significant or otherwise. It's data from the Department of Statistics. So 2014, it went down. So we are waiting for data on 2015. And uh, labor force participation rate increased a bit from 65.5 uh, in 2012 to 67.5 in 2014. Productivity growth, we were worried as well, uh, based on the World Bank, that productivity will go down, but it didn't happen. 2012, it was 1.8%, and 2013 went down to 0.9%, and 2014, it went up to 3.5%. So that's a positive trend. <coughs> and poverty line income, which was the threshold to determine the uh, uh, people in Malaysia who are living below the poverty line, also increased, which is a positive trend, from uh, 861 to 950. And Gini coefficient, it was uh, before the implementation of minimum wage, uh, it was 0 0.4, and it went down to 0 0.42, sorry, sorry, 0 0.43, and it went down to 0 0.4 in 2014. Now, I think South Africa is a bit different. Uh, your Gini coefficient is, is, is uh, very much different than what we have. <coughs> now, CPI. CPI is the consumer price index, uh, or rather the inflation rate. It went up uh, from 2012, 1.6%. It went up to 3.2%. So this is worrying. The price of goods have gone up. Uh, we, we don't know why. Uh, we, perhaps some, some, some scholars will do some research to find out whether it is because of minimum wage or whether it's because of other factors in the fruit basket, food basket, sorry. Now, FDI, uh, this was also uh, raised in the World Bank report. Uh, the World Bank said, um, well, actually the World Bank, uh, just to recap uh, um, uh, a presentation yesterday, uh, they, they used the CG model, just like what we heard yesterday. 
the uh, assumption if, if we base it on 700, we base it on 800, 900, 1000, and what would be the impact on uh, investment, on, on foreign direct investment, on female labor, and, and et cetera, et cetera. It's quite uh, detailed in the World Bank report. So they have said that there will be a slight impact on the foreign direct investment, which means that uh, investment from overseas will go down. So, but, but, unfor but unfortunately, or rather fortunately, it went up. From 28 billion ringgit in 2012, it went up to 38 billion and, and 35 billion in 2014. These are new investment, excluding those who are uh, already there. New, I'm talking about new FDI. Now, insolvent companies in, in 2012, there were 1,550 companies became insolvent, and 2014, they uh, took less, it, it has become less. And employers were telling us earlier, before we implemented minimum wage, that there will be many companies closing down. But uh, it didn't really have much effect. Even, even if you want to look at one, uh, compare 2012 and 13, the difference was just about 13 companies closed down. Now, foreign companies registered went down in 2014 from 75 companies, new companies, I'm talking about new foreign companies registered in Malaysia went down, so this is not so good. Now, local companies increased in terms of registration from 45,300 in 2012, it went up to 49,000. These are new local companies. There are only about 800,000 companies in, in registered in Malaysia. So these are new companies registered in, in that particular year. Now, complaints closed down. Yes, there are some negative effects. In 2012, we had 20,000 companies closed down and left Malaysia for whatever reasons. In 2014, we had an increase of about 6,000. So 2015, we don't know yet. Now, uh, complaints relating to minimum wages, I, I've mentioned just now. 2013, we didn't really enforce the minimum wage order. Uh, it, it was like we closed one eye, or rather we closed two eyes. The, I mean, as an enforcement officer. But, but we, we guided them, we advised them, we took it offline. So we didn't prosecute them in courts. So the complaints, uh, 2014, we had about 1,389 complaints from the workers, and 2015, it reduced. And labor cases filed also reduced in 2015, and trade dispute also reduced. These are collective agreement cases. Now, uh, inspections, uh, out of about 800,000 companies that we have in Malaysia, uh, for the two years, 2014 and 15, we have uh, inspected 81,200 companies, so that is less than 10%. Taking into factor, we have only about 600 en enforcement officers all over the country. So the compliance rate is quite high. We have like 80,028 complied, and we have about 1,000 employers plus who have not complied. So we are taking them to court. Now, prosecutions relating to minimum wages for the two years, uh, we have a secured conviction, 148, 42 employers, which we have taken them to court and they have not paid minimum wage, they have been fined by the court. Now, under our Act, first time offence is uh, fine, monetary fine. If the employer is caught again, and the second time is custodial sentence, he'll be sent to prison. So, so far, we haven't got a second time offence yet. <coughs> now, some of the challenges, no, I'll, I'll skip this first. So, summary of what I've presented, there are both positive effects and, and negative effects. We had an increase in wages, uh, it's a given fact, because basic wage has been increased. Mean wages have been increased, CE uh, increased, and unemployment rate reduced. Labor force participation rate increased, productivity growth increased, and uh, PLI increased, Gini coefficient reduced, which is good, and lesser number of companies became insolvent and etc. Now, there are negative wipes, negative effects so far. CPI increased, probably many reasons, but uh, we don't know whether it's because of minimum wage or not. FDI reduced, 
And there is a drop in registration of foreign companies, increase in companies closing down and leaving Malaysia. Now, some of the challenges that we have faced so far, as far as minimum wage is concerned, one is micro-employers. They, they are telling us that uh, they are small-time employers, they are having four to five workers, maybe even less. Profit is less, so uh, they can't afford to pay minimum wage, which is 900 or 800. And we took it up to the NWCC whether to consider giving them any exemption. The answer was no. The cabinet said no. No exemption for this group of employers simply because they are vulnerable group of workers in this particular uh, uh, subsector or whatever it is. Now, minimum wage for foreign workers. We have a large number of foreign workers from Bangladesh, India, uh, uh, Indonesia and, and whatnot. There are about 2.5 million of them, the official number, probably equal number illegals. So they wanted a separate minimum wage for foreign workers. Uh, for a fact that uh, foreign workers come with free accommodation and, and whatnot compared to locals. And we also took it up to the council and the answer was no. No separate minimum wage for foreign workers. They are to be treated equally. And, and on this, we also consulted ILO. ILO said no they have to be treated equally. Well, okay, now disabled workers and those workers in NPEs, welfare homes, senior citizens' uh, homes, they wanted uh, exemptions because they are not profit-making entities. But there are workers working there on a contract of service basis. They wanted exemptions. Uh, we also took it up to the NWCC, a heated debate in the council, and the answer was no. The cabinet also agreed. No deferment, no exemptions. And uh, we have few issues there. Workers are still asking for a higher minimum wage from what we have now. And, and the employers are telling the uh, existing minimum wage is too high. Uh, and, and the domestic workers issue is still brewing up because uh, at, at this point of time, uh, minimum wage is not applicable to domestic workers as well. Now, um, these are some of the conclusions, and I think um, the, the challenges, I think, uh, are normal because we are implementing it for the first time. Likewise, I think South Africa will face the same thing. There will be challenges. Uh, but we have a very strong tripartite uh, arrangement. So we, we have issues. We take it up to the tripartite and see how best we, we can solve them. And... and um, <coughs> As far as the government official position is concerned, we are very committed to ensure the success of minimum wage policy. And, and SMEs, we have always tell them, you need to revisit your business model and, and see whether you can introduce multi-skilling, multitasking, and whatnot. <coughs> and so far, we haven't really had a real significant negative effect of 2012 minimum wage order. So generally, it's positive, but we don't know what's going to happen in 2016 and 17. The economy, the world economy seems to be uh, not in a very positive note. The ringgit Malaysia against US dollars is quite, quite bad. And, and the depreciation of oil price in the world market. We are, we are actually an oil producing nation. So the oil price has gone down quite very low. So that is really affecting the revenue for Malaysia. Now, we just completed our review of minimum wage order. We just did it, finalized it in January 2016, and we are uh, working with the AG chambers to gazette it next month, sorry, if possible, uh, this month, and it will take effect on 1st July 2016. <coughs> so what we have done is a slight increase, uh, which was, of course, the workers group was not happy, but cabinet said, for a first time review, we increase a bit. So it was from 900 to 1,000 in Peninsula Malaysia. So uh, about 11% increase and from 800 to 920 in East Malaysia. And we have removed the clause of deferment applications. No more deferment ap can be applied. So it is a uh, go. And both the micro and non-micro employers will have to start on 1st July. No more different day. And there's no more clause on reduced rate for probationers. 
and because we found out some kind of abuse was happening there, so we, we took it off. And there's no more clause on restructuring of wages in this coming new order, but domestic servants remain excluded uh, for the time being. But, and, and lastly, we have also deliberated at great length the minimum wage for peace rated workers, those work on task work, trip commission, who do not have a basic wage. We had a heated argument between both groups on several equations uh, on this, but somehow we have come to a conclusion that we will create a new paragraph in the new minimum wage order that this group of workers who do not have basic wages will have to be paid no less than 1,000 ringgit or 920. We, have, uh, we are working on the legal tax on that uh, now. Now, um, I think uh, capacity building for enforcement officers is a bit lacking in, in Malaysia because we, we're having short of enforcement officers. It's about 500 plus for 800,000 employers in the country. So uh, inspection-wise, it's a bit getting a bit tough. And um, I, I think uh, we did uh, sort expertise from uh, World Bank and of course ILO. And, and there's no one-size-fits-all model. What is suitable for Malaysia may not be suitable for South Africa or any other country. So you have to pick and choose uh, what is best for your country and, and what is not good for your country. And because our economic background is different, our, economic, our political history is different than, than your country. I think you know what I mean. And, and we think uh, a balanced approach is, is the best approach for the first time, national minimum wage. And, and of course, we have to base it on empirical data. Now, commitment from my minister, wherever he goes in his speeches uh, on minimum wage, he always say minimum wage is here to stay for good and there's no turning back. So that's a commitment from our minister and the government. And, and um, of course, employers are trying their very best to put the minimum wage down. And, and so far, we are still uh, holding on to it. Now, if you need more information, you, you can email to me. Or uh, you can invite me again for a third time <laughs> to your beautiful country. And we have a minimum wage portal mohr.gov minimum wage. So I think some of you have uh, browsed it and, and um, you can look at it. What, what are the detailed contents there? Now with that, thank you very much.